I'm so glad you're with me today on 7 at 7. I'm Walter Hallam, and today I believe in these next seven minutes that I can bring a word to you from the Bible that will help you overcome regrets, things that you wish you had not done, things you did or you failed to do, things that maybe uh, just have not brought a satisfaction to you in life, and how you can overcome that, recover, and become everything God wants you to be. I believe the Bible, the Scriptures, will actually help us with that. Uh, so uh, be sure and like this today. Go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Uh, share this with a friend. Always go uh, to Walter Howland Ministries and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. And be sure and turn on the notification also so you'll know when we're going to be there with you. All right, let's talk about overcoming regrets. Uh, you know, I had read an article sometime back, and in it there were eight things which were called the eight regrets that men and women had in this particular survey. Regrets are things that you have done or you have not done that you wish you would or would not have done. Like I'm wearing this rust-colored shirt right now, and I've got red hair, and I'm wondering if it makes me kind of look like a strawberry uh, talking to you today. But anyway, I am glad I'm with you, and I hope it's not a regret. So be sure and tell me what you think, uh, and just give me a little comment while you watch this today. You know, in the Bible, uh, God says that we can reign in life in Romans 5, 17. We can reign and rule in life over circumstances. And we're in a very uh, difficult season in many ways in people's lives today. And so it's very necessary that we learn how to overcome regrets, how we come to rule and reign in Christ uh, through Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Now, here's this particular survey, and I do think it's interesting, of eight regrets that people had in life. The first one was their job, their occupation, the work that they did. So many people go to work every day and they're dissatisfied at what they do, not how good they do it, but it just doesn't necessarily satisfy their soul, the thing they really wish they could do. And they regret not having begun earlier in life and pursuing something that really made them feel uh, good about what they were doing and why they were doing that, something with purpose. That's interesting. Uh, the second thing I thought was interesting uh, was the time and the motion that was involved, the hours that are involved, or that workaholic mentality. Sometimes if you're doing something that you really don't like, but you have to do that to meet the standard of living that you are pursuing, it can create a large regret inside of you. Uh, the third thing I thought it was interesting uh, is people ignore their health and they regret how earlier in life they did not start taking care of themselves. Now it's never too late to start taking care of your health with good diet, with exercise, uh, good medical checkups, all of those things. But what happens if we start at that earlier? Maybe we can overcome some of the problems that come on later in life. And I trust maybe that'll talk to someone right now who is having a little difficult time getting motivated to just get up and walk, to move around, to do something in a positive manner or to change your diet a little bit. And I'm not trying to meddle with anybody and be a, a diet guru. I'm talking about overcoming regrets. Uh, the way you overcome it is you do something different. It's very necessary to hear that. And you have to have a starting point. And when you start, nothing replaces starting. When you have a starting point and then you begin to pursue things that overcome regret, then you will live beyond it, live above it, or you will override it. You will reign in life. Uh, the Bible says through one Christ Jesus. The fourth thing, and I thought it was interesting, uh, there are so many people who never played a team sport. And I thought, well, now that's an interesting thing that so many people uh, regret that they really never played a team sport. You know, uh, people, you and me, we're made to be very social. And we learn so much. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron, so does a man his friend's countenance. And so when we have a, a team mentality about us, and we are uh, people that are working with other people, whether it's a team sport uh, like baseball or basketball or, or volleyball or something, when you were young and you begin to learn the qualities of camaraderie and teamwork, uh, many times people uh, forget 
what that adds, the value that that actually adds to your life. It's one of the uh, things that today when so many kids are going to school, to primary school, they're going online instead of meeting with their friends on a daily basis. There's interaction that takes place. And I just believe that even if you're onlining today in school, that uh, your parents or you, or as a parent, you'll see to it that your children also interact with other children in a very positive, good manner because it's very necessary to do that. And you're never too old yourself to be involved with the team sport, to be involved with interaction with other friends because iron sharpens iron, the Bible says. And God is speaking about the countenance and the character of men and women. We develop through that interaction with one another. Then the fifth thing, and I think this is a, a fascinating thing, one of the biggest regrets was not staying in touch with their friends. Look, friends take time. Uh, friends are real, they're sincere, and friends uh, are necessary in our life because no man is an island, somebody once said. And it's very necessary to have friends. You know, if you just had three good friends that you trust, that you could communicate with, talk with, and fellowship with, I believe you would be a very, very blessed person. I'll continue this teaching on the next 7 at 7. I'm Walter Hallam, and I pray this has helped you today. Let me pray for you now. Father, in Jesus' name, help us reign in life by overcoming the regrets that we have. Let us categorize them, Lord, in a way that they do not dominate or limit or hinder our own character. We want to be more like you every day, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for helping, working with us to become everything we are supposed to be. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm Walter Hallam. This is 7 at 7. I trust this has been a blessing to you today. I cannot wait to see you on the next 7 at 7.